Hello there, welcome to this edition of AgriTalk right here on KTN Farmers TV. Today we are in Moranga County, right here in Mkulima Mdogo Seedling Limited, and we'll be talking about seed propagation and the process of doing this and how you as a farmer can find this in the market. My name is Kelvin Yakundi. Join me as we go through this process. All right, so today we'll be talking to one Kezia who is a production manager here at Mkulima Mdogo Seedling. And she's going to explain to us the process of seed propagation. She, she's also going to explain to us how you as a farmer can make sure that you get good yields from doing this. My name is Kezia Nderito, production manager here at Mkulima Mdogo Seedlings. Mm -hmm. All right, so Mkulima Mdogo, Mdogo Seedling, explain to us what you guys exactly do. Uh, as you get the title, or the company's name is Mkulima Mdogo Seedlings. Uh, basically, we do seedlings, we do raise seedlings from the seed to the seedling. And uh, Mkulima Mdogo means that we cater even to the smallest farmer. There is no limitation that you must be one acre and above. Even if you need five seedlings, you'll get them here at Mkulima Mdogo Seedlings. Yeah. So basically, you just help small older farmers. Mm, yeah, we help the small older farmers, and gradually they grow to be big farmers. What is the process of uh, seed propagation? Explain this to us. Okay, the, for you to have a healthy and a good uh, seedling that will with that will withstand the conditions outside in the farm. Number one, you need to have a certified seed. You need to have a growing media, which is a soilless media. And uh, you need to have good structures that will help you to fight the diseases and uh, that will help you to, to keep away the pests. And uh, the soilless media that we use, we buy it from uh, another company, which is uh, disease-free. It has no pest. So our farmers are guaranteed that we cannot transfer any diseases or pest to their farms. Mm -hmm. We use the soilless media to propagate our seeds and um, we prepare our soil to make sure that uh, it has the correct EC and also pH to favor the growing of uh, that seed. And uh, after we have the soil ready, we have the trees. This is an example of the trees that we use and uh, you fill the trees with the media and then you make the uniform holes. The importance of making the uniform holes, it is to make sure that uh, the seeds has uniform germination. Then you do the covering with the same media and then you take it to a, a chamber called germination chamber that has uh, favorable conditions for the germination of the seed. Is there a type of uh, soil medium that you use? Yeah, the type of the soilless media that we use, we use the cocoa peat. The importance of using cocoa peat rather than using the, the normal soil, you find that uh, most of the soils, they have a soil bone diseases, something like uh, bacteria wilt, fusarium wilt. And the moment you have uh, that disease in your farm, it will cost you a lot. That's why we want to use a cocoa pit, which we guarantee our farmers. We cannot take any soil bone diseases in their farm. So is it right for a farmer to take a soil, for example, a loam soil or clay soil uh, to do seed uh, propagation? Uh, it depends with the preference of a farmer. You find that uh, most farmers will take the seeds from the agrovets and then they go and propagate for themselves. Number one, uh, when they are going to transplant that seedling, they will transplant uh, together with the soil bone diseases. They will also transplant with the pests that are in the soil. Number two, the germination will be very low compared to when we propagate for our farmers. 
you get uh, depending on the seeds you get uh, 98 percent you get 90 percent and then where you find that when a farmer propagate for him or herself in the soil he'll get around 40 to 50 percent which will be a double loss because uh, he or she has already purchased the seeds You've spoken about a farmer having a certified seed. What do you mean when you say this? The importance of uh, having the certified seed, you are sure that uh, the germination will be 85% and above. And again, the, the disadvantage of using the uncertified seed, you find that they are the second generation. So the produce that you'll get from those seeds, it is very small and of poor quality. And like when you use the certified seeds, you get the quality produce. And as a farmer, you look at the output, at the end result. That is which will give you the profit. So why the greenhouse? Uh, the importance of uh, using the greenhouse, number one is to secure your seedlings. You, they are in a structure you from, uh, from theft. Number one, you secure them from theft. Number two, from any distractions that may come on your way. And uh, again, the structures will help you keep the, the pest away. And when they are in this structure, it is able to scout and monitor if there are any diseases, if there are any pests. And uh, you can recommend the precaution to take uh, after that. Yes. What are some of the requirements of taking care of seeds? Um, for example, temperature. Explain to us about this. For you to have uh, quality seedlings, you have to check at your temperatures. That is also another reason why we have a greenhouse. A greenhouse will help you to maintain the temperatures of uh, 25, 26 degrees, which will help your plant to grow quickly. And uh, also the temperature at, uh, at some point will help your plant to harden, in that when it goes uh, to the field, it will not uh, face that uh, transplanting shock. At least it will withstand. And how often uh, can someone water these seedlings to reach maturity? Uh, for you to know at what time to water, the plant itself will communicate to you. It will tell you that I need some water because uh, you cannot keep on watering, watering, watering and the soil is wet. So you need to keep on scouting, you need to keep on uh, checking the amount of water in, the, in your tray. And as, um, at some point, we'll keep them without water and are going the process of uh, hardening. So when the, the seedling is a bit tiny, maybe from uh, planting, to two weeks, you will keep cross uh, monitoring because it will need waters. But uh, after that, you will keep on skipping. You find that it is uh, withering, but uh, you give it like two or three hours to continue withering so that it can harden. Because when it goes out in the field, it will find the same uh, temperatures and direct sunlight. So you keep on checking. The plant itself will communicate to you. What shows you that the seed is ready to be transplanted? Uh, for you to know that uh, the seedling is ready to be transplanted, number one, there is that uh, time duration. Most, uh, most seedlings take four weeks to be ready, but also depends with the preference of a farmer. Uh, there is a farmer who wants it uh, when it is a bit tiny, others want when it is big, depending on the location where you are planting. The plant also will communicate to you that I'm ready to be planted because you'll check at the stem, it is well hardened, you check at the root mass and uh, you find that because the, of the trees, you don't leave them to overgrow because uh, as uh, compared to the field, if the plant of a stays in the nursery, it will start to produce flowers in a tender age. And when you take it to the farm, a bit they will delay because it started flowering before it is established. The roots are well established in the farm, enough foliage to feed the flowers. So you find that uh, the plant will undergo stunted growth. So. You have to look at the age of that seedling, mostly it's four weeks, and then also you look at the root mass and the foliage. 
and the plant will be ready for transplanting. What is the difference between the seed that is grown in the greenhouse and the one that is uh, grown in the field? Uh, the difference between the seedling that has been grown in the greenhouse and in the field, there is a very big uh, difference because you find that the seedling that is grown in the field, it, is, it has already established uh, its, its roots in the soil. So when you are uprooting to transplant, you might cut some roots, so that uh, will injure the roots. And when you transplant it, you'll find that uh, the, the plant will be slow to pick because the plant will concentrate in healing the wound that uh, was induced during uprooting. And also now because uh, that plant was established in the soil, it was feeding from the soil. Now you have you have induced stress again for it to establish the roots again. So you find that before the roots are well established, the plant will have a stunted growth because the, the plant will concentrate, all its hormones will concentrate in uh, building new roots. And like uh, those that are grown in the, in the, green, uh, in the nursery, uh, like in the greenhouse, the roots are, are, uh, are good they have a good root mass so the moment you transplant the work of the plant it's just opening the roots and within five days the plant has already picked and you find that it will have no stress and uh, unlike the one that was transplanted from the farm you find that uh, it can get sick anytime because uh, it has wounds so the bacteria and the virus they have at the entrance to access the plant. What is the standard height of a plant that is grown in a greenhouse? Uh, there is the standard uh, height that the plant will grow in the greenhouse. The reason why it cannot grow tall because uh, even as the building, the higher the building, the deeper the foundation. So you find that the roots are uh, restricted so it cannot grow big because the roots are not deep anchored. So you have that stage where the plant cannot grow any longer. As I had said earlier, it will start to produce flowers at, a, at this age, at that height. What are some of the seeds that you propagate in this greenhouse? Most of the seedlings that uh, we propagate in this greenhouse is uh, mostly they are the, for the horticulture. We have uh, brassicas, these are cabbages, broccolis, Sukuma wikis, we have spinach, we have tomatoes, we have uh, pepper, green pepper, red pepper, yellow pepper, we also have onions, we also have the kienyejis, the managu, terere, saga, all these. And some of the challenges that you've encountered while propagating seeds in this greenhouse? Propagating the seedlings in a greenhouse. Uh, there are some uh, there are some challenges that you encounter number one is uh, maybe you have a pest though it's rare to have a pest in the greenhouse if your management is okay when you have a pest in the greenhouse it will be very hard for you to eradicate the pest because uh, because of the high temperatures the pest will hatch quickly so you find that uh, the more you control the living pest and then you forget about the eggs, so they'll keep hurting, hurting. So that is the biggest challenge that we have. For example, the tables that are elevated in order to put the trays there, underneath the tables, can someone plant um, their seedlings there? Uh, yes, you can uh, propagate under the tables, but uh, you'll have some challenges. Because uh, when you put the tray under the table, we have the soil and you know that uh, the plant has some um, uh, hormones that communicate with the soil so you find that uh, the plant will try to penetrate its roots in the soil and from there you can obtain the soil bone diseases and again uh, because under you see under the tables there yeah, is no the penetration of the sun it's a bit hard so you find that you are seedlings will grow tall and they will not harden because they are trying to look for the sunlight so they will not harden 
it will be hard for them when they go outside because they are under shade and outside there is a direct sunlight. So what is the method of farming that you use um, here? The method of farming that you practice here is the inorganic and you find that uh, just like a child, the plant will also communicate to you that uh, I'm lacking nitrogen, I'm lacking phosphorus, I'm lacking uh, potassium, I'm lacking micro elements. So again, you'll have to go back to the plant, check the plant and know which element the plant is uh, using. We don't have a specific fertilizer that we use, but according to the plant, you study the plant and you know Maybe the plant will communicate, I need phosphorus. You go back in the store, you find the fertilizer that contains high phosphorus and you feed your plant. So that is the method that we use. You com the plant communicates to you and then you feed the plant. For the seedlings, for our seedlings to do well and thrive here in this greenhouse, there are some uh, greenhouse management practices that we do take. <coughs> Number one, it's uh, cleaning. You have to maintain the cleanliness of uh, high cleanliness because uh, the moment the seed will get uh, maybe a splash from the soil or dust, you find that uh, it can contract the, the soil bone diseases and the virus. So you have to keep the greenhouse clean. You have also to remove the spider webs because from there you can rare a pest called the uh, spider mite. So you have to keep on check. Anything that uh, can, anything that can hamper the pest or anything that can uh, induce the multiplication of the pest, you have to keep it away from the greenhouse. Number two is uh, disinfection. You find that um, you have to keep on disinfecting the, the greenhouse. And uh, also you have to keep the you maintain also the, the temperatures and the humidity. You can maintain the temperatures and you forget to maintain the humidity. So your plant will, will not be as good at, as it ought to be. How do you meet the farmer's demand? We have different types of farmers. There is those who do cabbages, others are speci specialized with tomatoes, others specialize in onions. So for you to accommodate all types of farmers, you have to put all the varieties and all the types of the plants. So can a farmer request you as um, Kulima Mdogo seedling to just grow for them their seedlings and then when they reach maturity, uh, that you give them back to the farmer? A farmer can go in a seed company uh, in an agrovet, buy his own seeds and bring the seeds to us so that we can propagate for him or her. And uh, when, the seed, when the seedlings are ready, we call him back to come and pick the seedling. Today we have seen the seed propagation process. We have also looked at how the seedling can be grown and the process which you can manage your greenhouse in order to make sure that the seedlings thrive. We're going for a short break. We'll be right back with more. Welcome back. This is AgriTalk right here on KTN Farmers TV. And we are joined by Kezian Derito, who is going to be talking to us more about the types of propagation and what you as a farmer need to do in order to make sure that your seedlings are able to get to the market. Um, welcome to the show. Thank you. So what are the types of seed propagations that we have? Uh, we have a different type of propagation. We have sexual, we have asexual, we have a seed propagation, we have cutting propagation, and we have air rearing uh, propagation. So those are, okay, for the section asexual, mostly are done in the field, uh, more about pollination. But when it comes to the the seedlings and the raising seedlings we have a seed propagation that is what we mean to do here and also we have cuttings 
we also do cuttings cuttings are uh, basically for fruits we also have some vegetables that uh, we do cuttings cutting in it includes grafting where we do some grafting in tomatoes we have a uh, yeah, rearing it's almost the same like in cuttings but you don't uh, pluck the 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 mother plant so those are the types of propagation but basically here we deal with two seed propagation and then we have cuttings so among these types of propagation which one is the easiest to do uh, the simplest to do is the seed propagation because you only have to you have uh, if you have the certified seed you have the media so and then you have uh, the structures that will favor the germination of the seed and also those that uh, will favor growing of the seedling so seed propagation is the easiest also cutting is the easiest when it comes to fruits uh, cuttings that is grafting is the easiest than using the seed it is a bit faster than before you propagate your seed it grows and then before it attains the maturity it will take long and some of the requirements needed for better propagation uh, for better propagation you just need to have a, a structure like a greenhouse that is the for the seeds as we had discussed earlier about the the greenhouse how it helps in propagating the seeds you find that uh, it will help you to maintain the humidity to maintain the required temperature or also the security also it fastens or it quickens the maturity so after propagation uh, what is the medium you use to deliver the seedlings to the farmer? Uh, depends with the destination. How we pack our seedlings depends with the destination and also how our farmers want them to be delivered. Some we want to take it by the trees and they usually say that customer is always right. If they demand we deliver them with trees, we shall deliver them with trees. But using trees is a bit expensive because you need to have a vehicle where you will have to to arrange them because you cannot then compact them because they can break each other again you can you can pack using a box as you can see the the seedling it has root mass so the soil is compact uh, as you uproot it from the tray you pack it in the box lying like this so it cannot injure each other you pack well then you can send with uh, any means carriage matatus motorbike and it will be okay mm -hmm. yeah. how is the seedling market around this area uh, the market around this area most of the time we can judge the market uh, depending on the weather climate mm -hmm because you find many farmers depends on the rains so when there there is a downpour you find that uh, the sales are high others will depend on the rivers and not everywhere that we have rivers and boreholes so you find the uh, market depends with the weather conditions yeah so how did covid-19 affect uh, your business uh, covid-19 really affected our business because we find that uh, uh, we market our siblings and we sell our siblings all over the country. And you find that uh, number one, due to lockdown, it was hard for us to transport the siblings from one county to the other because of the lockdown. Because you find we use any means of transport. You find that uh, our client wants us to send it through Matatus. <laughs> you find that. Uh, due to lockdown of some counties you cannot access so you find that uh, the market and our sales were really down and then again due to to how the pandemic affected other people's business you find that people are not in a position to continue with farming you find like uh, maybe some materials are uh, 
attend from outside the country. And now the government has said nothing is coming into our country. So you find that uh, many people post farming and that also affected us because we had some seedlings. So as the farmers delayed uh, in farming, our produce also delayed in the greenhouse. So three years after the pandemic, can you say the business is improving? Uh, for the three years, we can say that uh, as the government has uh, has proceeded removing the restrictions about the COVID, it has really helped us in uh, in marketing, and also in another way, it has also affected us. Like for example, we have the the high cost of living. You find that everything has gone up in terms of uh, prices. You find that uh, the farm inputs are really expensive. For example, maybe before COVID, a farmer could tell you, give me a quotation of one acre of tomatoes and uh, you give to, to them. And then if the same farmer tells me today to give them a quotation of uh, farming tomatoes for one acre, you find that the cost is double because of high, the fertilizers, the prices are very high, the insecticide, the fungicide, everything, it's very high. And then you find that in the market, the, the, how the farmer are selling their produce, the prices has remained constant. So you find the farmer is, um, he has no interest in farming because the input is high and the output is low. So, that is basically the change that we have seen. Mm -hmm. Now, moving on to the export market, do you export your seedlings? Yeah, because uh, we have really marketed our company even in social media. So you find that even people outside the country will have access to our online pages and they are really interested with uh, what you are doing. So you'll find some people will place their order from outside the country. And uh, because we have marketed our our seedlings, we have nothing else to do other than to deliver. <laughs> and which seedling has a higher demand in the export market? Uh, mostly we export uh, fruits, uh, fruit like uh, tree tomato. We export them. Also like uh, cabbages, we also export. Those are the seedlings that you have been exporting. Mm -hmm. yeah. And do you find maybe some seedlings that you grow here, do you find some of them not being taken so that if you remain with them here up to a point where maybe you say, ah, let's just put them outside because now they are at the standard where they can't grow anymore inside the yeah. greenhouse? Uh, not really, mm -hmm. because that you find that uh, planning, in our planning logistics, you find that we will send our, one of our colleagues to the field, identify the opportunities. You find like, maybe you go to somewhere like Kirenyanga and you, then you find people here basically do tomatoes. So you are sure that if you do tomatoes, you will have a market. You send somebody else like Kajado, you see the people here do onions. So in, at the back of our minds, we have, if we do onions, we have a market where we can go and market. So we don't just uh, plant for, for the case of planting mm -hmm. and, so the, uh, and for keeping the greenhouse uh, green. But uh, we have a plan and we first of all look for the market mm -hmm. and then we lay out the, the plan of propagation. Mm -hmm. So it's hard for you to find an overgrown in the greenhouse. How many regions in the country is your company connected? Uh, we are connected all over the countries and uh, you find that we have been sending our seedlings at all uh, 47 counties. Mm -hmm. If it's Mombasa, we send. If it's uh, Garissa, we have sent some seedlings to Garissa. So we are not just, uh, we don't just do it in Moranga County. Here in Moranga, it's where we have a farm and our headquarters, but our sales are all over the country. And now we move on to the cost. What is the cost of starting such a greenhouse? And also even the seedlings, what is the cost? The cost is a bit high. 
no, a farmer might come here and say, ah, just buying seeds and trees and propagating. But uh, back at their mind, they don't know the whole process that we do for the propagation, setting up the greenhouse, the standards of a greenhouse. So you'll find that uh, the cost is very high. Because number one, you have to set up a structure. You, have, you must have a land, you set up the structure. You need to have these trees. You need to have the, the, the soilless media. You also need to have a certified seed. Some people are doing uh, the F2, the F2 seeds. You find somebody has gone to the farm, harvested the tomatoes, dried up the seeds, and then you start planting. So most of the uh, of the farmers think that a seed is just a seed. No, we have a seed and we have a certified seed. So if a farmer would like to set up a greenhouse, the cost is very high. Mm -hmm. yeah. Estimation. Uh, it depends uh, with the size of a greenhouse. Mm -hmm. Some would opt the normal greenhouse, a smaller one, a bigger greenhouse. Uh, for now, to give an estimation would be a bit hard because the the cost that uh, I used to to buy the greenhouse materials back then and now the prices are very different. Mm -hmm. And also to get the timber. To get these uh, the these wires, you know that the government has banned the scrap metal, so even the metals has gone high. Mm -hmm. So for now, it would be very difficult for me to give an estimate. All right. Now, in the counties, how are you connected with the farmers who are there? Uh, currently, we have uh, two centers. We have here in Moranga County. We also have one in Eldoret, and uh, we are setting another one in Akuru County. So, so far we can talk of those three counties, but as time goes, we are going to advance to Kirenyaga County, to Laikipia County, depending on the where the market is so that we can get closer to our farmers. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, just briefly tell us the prices of the seedlings we've seen in your farm. You have very many types of seedlings explain to us just the prices of some of these uh, seedlings. Uh, the, the cost of each seedlings also depends with the variety. Uh -huh. So well, for example like tomato we have different uh, varieties. You can find like uh, we have a variety called Zara. Zara goes for four shillings. You find another one like Terminator goes for four shillings. You find another one like Ansel goes for five shillings. Another one like Big Rock goes for seven shillings. So it depends with the variety. When you go to the capscam, you find that you have the green pepper that goes for four shillings. Again, we have the colored ones. We have red pepper and we have yellow, we have orange. That is a bit expensive, it goes for 12 shillings per seedling. When you go to the cabbages, we have the Cabbages, all of them, the varieties are two shillings. But uh, we have another one called red cabbage. That goes for three shillings. And uh, we also have the kills. Kills goes for two shillings. But we have another one called, uh, it's called malkia. And that goes for three shillings. Mm -hmm. So it also depends on the varieties. Do you usually have maybe an intermediary between the two of you or a middleman between the farmer and um, your company or the farmers just come directly? Uh, we don't have any intermediary. Maybe a well-wisher who would like to, to refer a friend to our company. But uh, we keep close, we keep in touch with our farmers. You find that uh, when delivering our seedlings, we go, we accompany our truck to the farm and before the farmer starts planting, we give some agronomical advices. And also if the farmer wants us to visit the farm, we do visit the farm. Some, sometimes we do impromptu visit. We want to see how our seedlings are doing. We want to see how the farmers are also are doing. You find that uh, some farmers will have challenges but they cannot speak uh, speak it up. They ask a neighbor, what did you do? 
and then the neighbor we refer but maybe the disease of the pest is totally different so we prefer visiting our farmers and uh, we give the the agronomical uh, advices accordingly now what are some of the challenges of doing seedling propagation uh, we have some challenges in doing the business in seedling propagation because we find that uh, no us like mkulima mdogo seedlings we give the best and the good quality and we give the hybrid seedlings but now you find another person will try and see the mkulima mdogo is uh, is um, dominating in the market so he will try to brand himself as mkulima mdogo seedling so you find a farmer is calling you you supplied tomato even they don't know the variety and maybe the variety they mention we don't have it so you find that that is a bit of challenge and to convince the farmer i'm not the one so it will be a bit difficult and uh, to protect your name you have to cover up the to cover up with the farmer so that is the biggest challenge that we have and uh, another challenge we have is that uh, we have many nurseries upcoming and you find uh, most people don't want to undergo the the full cost like you know for purchasing the the certified seeds they just do the other seeds and then you find they spoil the market because you know the seed is a bit cheaper not like the certified seed so when the uh, seedling is a bit cheaper we find that uh, many many clients will want the cheaper seedlings so you find that uh, even in the market we are struggling to to fight you no know, when you tell a farmer mine is certified the other one the other person just also mine is certified but you find that many farmers don't want to go in details can i see how certified it is but uh, still with the challenges we still driving in the market mm. yeah. and now uh, you've spoken about thriving mm. what are some of the advantages of doing this business uh, the advantages of doing the business is that uh, you are not just growing yourself you are growing other people like uh, we find that uh, many youths will say that there is no improvement they are hustling but if you find some use and educate them that i have this ready seedling you ask just to plant in water and i give you the program if they follow that program the they will sterilize and they see the advantage of farming so most it is not for our benefit but we also want to give back to the society and bearing in mind that uh, agriculture holds the backbone of our country so we still want to see our country growing and uh, also not just importing things in our country but also we can export quality things so that is the major advantage that uh, we can see in this business yeah so what is your advice to a youth who wants to start such kind of a business uh, what i can tell to youths who want to start the business of uh, propagating seedlings they can still go on and you start you make sure that uh, you have capital you find that uh, some people will jump in without uh, wanting to know what is the capital what can i do some even don't know don't have any knowledge about agriculture but uh, within one month or two they are discouraged and then they say that uh, this is not a good business and they say that uh, agriculture is not good but uh, for any youth who want to start uh, this business they can first uh, look for advices they can have some articles about this about the business so that um, at back of their minds they can know what they are doing again it's not any youth who can start because if uh, they don't have the passion for agriculture they can't so they reach a point and say this business is not making the money that i want but uh, as i had said earlier it's not about me but about the society about the other person and seeing the country growing so in the coming years 
um, where do you see this type of farming going? Uh, the business of uh, seed ring propagation. In few years to come, we find that many farmers will have embraced uh, the business. But, uh, you know, passion differs. There are some who like to set up a, a seedling uh, propagation. Others would want to do it in the field. Uh, uh, basically, we cannot all of us do the seedlings. If we do the seedlings, who will plant the farm? And at the end, we will not eat the seedlings. So we need other people who are going to, to, to do agriculture in the field. You get the seedlings, you plant, and uh, as uh, as they how the economy it's uh, it's growing, we see that uh, many people are embracing agriculture. So in some few years to come, the business will be not for some few people, but uh, many people will have been blessed. And uh, our joy is to see that every county have a setup of a seed. All right, we've come to the end of AgriTalk today. We've been talking to Kezian Derito, who is a production manager here at Mkulima Mdogo Seedling. And she's been talking to us about seedling propagation and what you as a farmer need to do or don't need to do in order to make sure that you have better yields. My name is Kelvin Yakundi. Let's meet same time, same place, KTN Farmers TV.